Every one of us is, in the cosmic perspective, precious. If a human disagrees with you, let him live. In a hundred billion galaxies, you will not find another. The nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, the carbon in our apple pies were made in the interiors of collapsing stars. We are made of star stuff. Science is not only compatible with spirituality, it is a profound source of spirituality. One glance at a book and you hear the voice of another person, perhaps someone dead for 1,000 years. To read is to voyage through time. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. For me, it is far better to grasp the universe as it really is than to persist in delusion, however satisfying and reassuring. One of the saddest lessons of history is this. If we've been bamboozled long enough, we tend to reject any evidence of the bamboozle. We're no longer interested in finding out the truth. The bamboozle has captured us. It's simply too painful to acknowledge, even to ourselves, that we've been taken. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Who is more humble? The scientist who looks at the universe with an open mind and accepts whatever the universe has to teach us, or somebody who says everything in this book must be considered the literal truth and never mind the fallibility of all the human beings involved. Imagination will often carry us to worlds that never were, but without it we go nowhere. We are like butterflies who flutter for a day and think it is forever. The cosmos is within us. We are made of star stuff. We are a way for the universe to know itself. The universe is a pretty big place. If it's just us, seems like an awful waste of space. books permit us to voyage through time to tap the wisdom of our ancestors we can judge our progress by the courage of our questions and the depth of our answers our willingness to embrace what is true rather than what feels good you're an interesting species an interesting mix you're capable of such beautiful dreams and such horrible nightmares. You feel so lost, so cut off, so alone, only you're not. See, in all our searching, the only thing we found that makes the emptiness bearable is each other. I don't want to believe, I want to know. The nuclear arms race is like two sworn enemies standing waist-deep in gasoline, one with three matches, the other with five. The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. I consider it an extremely dangerous doctrine, because the more likely we are to assume that the solution comes from the outside, the less likely we are to solve our problems ourselves. Exploration is in our nature. We began as wanderers, and we are wanderers still. We have lingered long enough on the shores of the cosmic ocean. We are ready at last to set sail for the stars. The universe seems neither benign nor hostile, merely indifferent. Extinction is the rule. Survival is the exception. 
Science is a way of thinking, much more than it is a body of knowledge. If it can be destroyed by the truth, it deserves to be destroyed by the truth. If I finish a book a week, I will read only a few thousand books in my lifetime, about a tenth of a percent of the contents of the greatest libraries of our time. The trick is to know which books to read. The cure for a fallacious argument is a better argument, not the suppression of ideas. It's a lazy Saturday afternoon. There's a couple lying naked in bed reading Encyclopedia Britannica to each other and arguing about whether the Andromeda Galaxy is more numinous than the Resurrection. Do they know how to have a good time, or don't they? You have to know the past to understand the present. Nature is always more subtle, more intricate, more elegant than what we are able to imagine. Understanding is a kind of ecstasy. Books are like seeds. They can lie dormant for centuries and then flower in the most unpromising soil. But I could be wrong. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments and continue enriching your mind.